This is a video on the normal distribution. I'll be talking about the standard normal distribution and also the general normal distribution. So the standard normal distribution has a few different names. A lot of people know it as a bell curve and it has a shape. Some people also know it as a Gaussian curve, but we're going to be calling it the normal curve or the normal distribution. And when we talk about the standard normal distribution, what we mean is that the mean is equal to zero and the standard deviation is equal to one. Now, if you remember the empirical rule, if the distribution is normal, then 68% of the data should fall between negative one and one. Well, for us, since we're talking about a curve and a distribution, we say 68% of the area under the curve, or in other words, the area under the curve of the standard normal distribution between negative 1 and 1 is 0.68. And the area under the curve for the normal distribution for z between negative 2 and 2 is equal to 0.95. And then finally, for z between negative 3 and 3, the area under the curve is 0.997. Now, I'm using the letter z, and it's not a coincidence, and that has to do with the z-score. So if you remember, the z-score is x minus mu divided by sigma. Well, if mu is 0, then x minus mu is just x and sigma is 1, so x over 1 is just x, so z is x. So let's continue on, and let's solve some problems. So first the question is, if z follows a standard normal distribution, find the probability that z is between negative 3 and 3. So if you remember the probability that z is between two numbers is the area under the curve between those two numbers on the z-axis. And that is 99.7% or 0.997. So second, let's find the probability that z is less than 1. So we want the area under the curve with z being less than 1. But it doesn't quite work with this exactly. But we can say that we know that in between negative 1 and 1, we know that the area is 0.68 below that curve. So outside will be 1 minus 0.68. So then if we want z to be less than 1, what we can do is we can take this 0.68 which is between negative 1 and 1, and then add to it the area to the left of negative 1. Well, the area to the left of negative 1, we can say that the area to the left of negative 1 and to the right of 1, by the rule of complements, is going to be everything but this 0.68, or 1 minus 0.68. So the area to the left of 1 will be 1 half times 1 minus 0.68. So in other words, if we want this area to the left of 1, we take 0.68 plus 1 half times 1 minus the probability that z is between negative 1 and 1, and that's 0.68 plus 1 half times 1 minus 0.68. And if you work out the arithmetic there, you get 0.84. So the next question I have is to find the probability that z is greater than 2. Now this is the area to the right of 2. So we're going to follow similar reasoning. We know that the area between negative 2 and 2, that is 0.95. So the area outside of this middle part will be 1 minus 0.95 by the rule of complements. And the area to the right is going to be half of that because 1 minus 0.95 gives the left and the right, so just the right is 1 half 
of 1 minus 0.95. So in other words, this probability that z is greater than 2 is equal to 1 half times 1 minus the probability that z is between negative 2 and 2. And that's 1 half times 1 minus 0.95. And if you work that out, you get 0 0.025. Okay, let's look at some more. And let's see what happens if you don't have a perfect integer like negative 1 or 1 or 2. What if you have fractions? Well, in that case, we're going to have to use our calculator. So, in particular, this is how we use our calculator. For any value of z, we can find the probability that z is between two numbers using the TI-8384 by going to second theirs, which is distribution, and then normal CDF, and then you type in a comma b, where a is the lower bound and b is the upper bound. So to find the probability that z is less than b, if you have to do that, that means you're going from actually negative infinity to b. And the calculator does not have a negative infinity key. So we kind of trick the calculator. And what you do is you just put negative and a bunch of nines. My recommendation is to put two more nines than the number of digits of the biggest number you're looking at, in this case, the b. Similarly, if you want to find out the probability that z is greater than a number, then we trick the calculator on the right-hand side, because then we're supposed to go from A to infinity. So we trick the calculator by typing in the normal CDF, A, comma, and then a bunch of nines. Again, I recommend two more nines than the number of digits, and you're pretty safe. So let's do some examples. So let's start out with the probability that Z is between 0.21 and 1.18. Okay, so here's my calculator. And what I do is I hit the second button, and then this VARES, which is the distribution button, D-I-S-T-R. And then I'm going to go to normal CDF. So I go down one, hit enter. And now what I'm asked is to find the probability that Z is between 0.21 and 1.18. So I go uh, 0.21 comma 1.18. I close the parenthesis and there we have it. So the probability that z is between 0.21 and 1.18 is about equal to 30% or so. 0.2978, etc. Okay, let's look at the next one. Okay, the second one I'm interested in is to find the probability that z is greater than 0 0.57. So again, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this by hand. So let's use our calculator again. Okay, so here's the calculator. And I do basically the same thing, but remember, this time I have to trick the calculator a little bit. So I go second distribution. I go to normal CDF, hit enter, and now I want the probability that z is greater than 0.57. So I go 0.57, comma, and I really want to go to infinity, so a couple nines is all I need because 0.57 is small and the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one, so maybe I'll put three nines. And then close the parentheses and then hit enter. So I could say that probability is about 28% chance. So let's look at another one. Okay, the third one I'm interested in is finding the probability that z is less than 1.34. So now I want the left side, and that's going to go from negative infinity to 1.34. 1.34 is here. Remember, 0 is right in the middle. So let's go to our calculator again. Okay, so here's the calculator. And again, I'm going to go to second, distribution, normal CDF. And then I want less than 1.34. That goes from negative infinity to 1.34. So I'll put a few nines in with a negative sign first. Notice it's negative 
not subtraction. Those are different keys in the calculator. So negative, bunch of nines, and then comma, and then 1.34. Close the parentheses, and I hit enter. And I can say that the probability that z is less than 1.34 is about equal to 91%. It rounds to. Okay, so now we're going to be thinking backwards. Okay, for any probability p, we can find the corresponding z such that the area to the left of z is p by using the TI-83 or 84 calculator. So this might be a little confusing. What I'm saying is that typically we want to find what is the probability, for example, that z is less than 1.25. That I call going forwards. But sometimes you want to go backwards, saying that if you know the probability, what value of z is such that the probability that we are less than that value is equal to this given number probability. And the way you go backwards on a calculator, if you remember from math, going backwards in a function is called taking the inverse. So we're going to use what's called the inverse norm. So in the calculator, you go to second vars, which is distribution, same thing. And then we're going to use inv norm and type in the probability. So let me give you an example. Let's see if we can find the value a such that the probability that z is less than that value a is equal to 0.38. So here, the area to the left of the curve is 0 0.38, and we want to find the value of z. So notice we're going backwards here. So let's go to our calculator, and I'll show you how to do that. So here's the calculator. I go to second, distribution, and now I'm going to go to number three, which is inv norm for the inverse normal. Hit enter. And now all I have to do is put in the number 0.38 because I want the value such that the probability is 0.38. So I go 0.38, close the parentheses, and hit enter. So we can say that the probability that z is less than negative 0.30548, etc., will be equal to 0.38. Let's do another example where you have to do one rule of complements first, and we'll, we'll understand that in a second. Notice for the calculator, it's assuming that we're talking about the area to the left of the given value is equal to this probability. What happens when we have to do the area to the right? So let's do an example of that one. So let's find A such that the probability that Z is greater than A is equal to 0 0.17. So now, probability that Z is greater than A, the picture of that is we're going to have some A over here, and then we're going to be looking at the area to the right of this A. And the calculator can only handle areas to the left. So we can say that if the area to the right is 0 0.17, then the area to the left, using the rule of complements, will be 1 minus 0 0.17 or 0.83. So we can find out the value of A such that the probability that Z is less than A is equal to 0.83. And we're going to do that with the calculator. So here's the calculator. And since I want to find out the z, such that the area to the left of z is 0.83, I go second, distribution. And then I'm looking for the z. I'm given the area. So that means I go backwards, which is an inv norm. And I hit enter. Now I type in 0.83. 0.83 and the paren and it gives me about 0.954 so I can say that the probability that z is 
greater than 0.954 is about equal to 0.17, which is what I wanted. So let's go back and look at some more um, examples and ideas. Okay, so here we have a question. What value of z corresponds to the 10th percentile? So on this one, you have to understand what the 10th percentile means. We want to find the value of z. The 10th percentile means that the probability of being below z should be 0.1. So that is, again, an inverse norm type of problem because we want to find out the value of z such so that the area to the left of z is 0.1. So I go to my calculator, and here's my calculator, and I go second, distribution, and I'm going to go inv norm because I'm going backwards. I know the area. I want z. Hit enter, and then just 0.1. Close the parens, hit enter, and we can say that the area to the left of z equals negative 1.28, etc., is equal to 0.1, or 10%. So the 10th percentile is negative 1.28. So now let's look at some more examples. Okay, so just a note, IQ scores, at least the way we're talking about measuring them, are normally distributed with mean 100 and standard deviation 10. So notice that when we're talking about this normal distribution, this is not a standard normal distribution. This is a general normal distribution. Standard normal distributions must have mean 0 and standard deviation 1, and that's not what we have. But the good news is we can still handle it, and we're going to be using the z-score to transform something from a normal distribution that is a general normal distribution to a normal distribution that's a standard normal distribution. So let me give you an example. Let's find the probability that a randomly selected person will have an IQ score between 80 and 120. So what we can do is we can convert 80 and realize that 80 is two standard deviations below 100. 2 times 10 is 20. 100 minus 20 is 80. And 120 is two standard deviations above 100. So we can convert this question to find the probability that a randomly selected person will have an IQ score between 80 and 120 to the probability that z, which follows a standard normal distribution, is between negative 2 and 2. And that we know from the empirical rule that that's 95% or 0.95. So let's look at another one. Find the probability that a randomly selected person will have an IQ score greater than 110. Well, notice 110 is a z-score of 1 because it is one standard deviation above 100. So we can rewrite this and say we want the probability that z is greater than 1. And then we do what we did before. If we want z to be greater than 1, we know the middle part in between negative 1 and 1 is 68% of the data. If we take 1 minus the probability that z is between negative 1 and 1, that'll give us the left and the right sides. If we divide by 2, that gives us just the right-hand side, and that's what we want. So 1 half times 1 minus 0.68, and if you work that out, you get about 16%. So let's do another one. What IQ score must a person have to be in the bottom 2.5 percentile? Okay, so now that tells us to the area to the left of some value is in the bottom 2.5 percentile, which means it's equal to 0 0.025. So if the area to the left is 0 0.025, if we double that, we'll get the outsides, left and right. And twice 2.5% is 5%. So that's the outsides. If we use the rule of complements, we get the inside. 1 minus 5% 
is 95%. And there we have it. So again, the left area is 0 0.025. So left and right combined is 0 0.05. So that means z is negative 2. And negative 2 is two standard deviations below the mean. That's what the z equals negative 2 means. And that means we subtract 2 times 10, or 20, from 100. And we get an IQ score of 80. So let's move on. So let's suppose that the mean class size at college is 22. And the standard deviation is 5. OK, I teach at a small college. We have small classes, so just believe me on that. If you're watching from somewhere, so Berkeley or UCLA or something like that, you're going to see much bigger classes. But in Tahoe, we have small class sizes. Assume the distribution is normal. Find the probability that a randomly selected class has the first question is fewer than 15 students, the second is more than 19 students, and third is between 18 and 25. Okay, so notice here 15 is not a nice number of standard deviations below the mean. 22 minus 7 gives you 15, and that's not a good multiple of 5. So we're not going to be able to do it that way. But the calculator comes to our rescue here. So all we have to do is tell the calculator what the mean and the standard deviation are, and the syntax will be normal CDF, you put in the low, the high, and then you put in the mean, and then you put in the standard deviation. So let me show you on the calculator how we do that. So here's the calculator. What I do, again, I go to second, distribution. We want normal CDF, and hit enter. And the syntax, again, is we put in the low. Now, we want less than 15, so the low is negative infinity. So, again, that means we need to trick the calculator with a negative sign. And then a bunch of nines. I'm going to go five nines this time. Comma. And then the high is 15. Comma. The mean was 22. Comma and the standard deviation was 5. I close my parentheses, and it hit Enter. So I could say that the probability that a randomly selected class will have class size less than 15 is about equal to 0 .0808 or so. So let's look at the next one. So if you remember, the next one said find the probability that the class size will have more than 19 students. So again, let's go to the calculator, and let's find that out. So here's the calculator. Again, I go second, distribution. I go down to normal CDF, hit enter. And then I go ahead and say, now we want to be greater than 19. So I go 19, comma, Supposed to go to infinity, I tricked the calculator with a bunch of nines, so a big, a big number, comma, and then the mean was 22, comma, and then the standard deviation was 5. I close the parentheses, I hit enter, and there we have it. The probability that the class will have more than 19 students is about equal to 0 0.7257. So let's do one more. So now let's find the probability that the class size will be between 18 and 25 students. So now we use a calculator again. Same idea. So here's the calculator. I go second, distribution. And then I go down to normal, CDF. And now I want between 18 and 25. So 18, comma, 25 comma, and then the mean was 22, comma, and the standard deviation was 5. And I close the parentheses. And I hit enter. So I could say the probability that a randomly selected class will have between 18 and 25 students 
will be about 0.51389 or so. Just a note, your calculator, even if you have a TI-84+, plus, it might look a little different when you go to the normal CDF. Sometimes it gives you a menu and it asks you for the lower bound, upper bound, mean and standard deviation. And then you just type those numbers in. So we do the same thing in that case, except it will actually prompt you for the numbers. It's a little easier. So this is one of the older calculators that I have on my emulator. So this is what we have today. So now let's look at one more example. OK, so now we have the question, a manager at the market finds that the distribution of receipts is normally distributed with mean $42.18 and standard deviation $17.65. Find the interquartile range, or the IQR. So to solve this problem, we have to remember what interquartile range is. So if you remember, the interquartile range is the difference between the 75th percentile and the 25th percentile. So now we got to individually first find the 75th percentile, then we find the 25th percentile. And the 25th percentile means, for example, the area to the left of that point, that value of x, will be 0.25. And the 75th percentile means the area to the left of that value will be 0.75. So notice this is going backwards. And we've seen it going backwards before when we used in norm, inverse norm function on the calculator. In this case, we're doing the same thing, but we don't have a standard normal distribution. We have a general normal distribution with a mean of 42.18 and a standard deviation of 17.65. But fortunately, the nice folks in Texas have programmed the Texas Instruments Calculator to work with us. And just like when you're using the normal CDF function and you tag on the mean and standard deviation, so you go low, high, mean, standard deviation, here we're just going to put the area, comma, the mean, comma, the standard deviation. So let's do that on our calculator, and I'll show you what I mean. So here's the calculator again. And what I'm going to do is go second, distribution. And then I'm going to go to inv norm, hit enter. And then again, I'm going to use 0.75, because if I want the third quartile, that means the area to the left should be 0 0.75, 75th percentile. Then I go comma, and then 42.18 was our mean. So 42.18, and then comma, and then I go to the standard deviation, which is 17.65. So 1, 7, point six five and the parenthesis hit enter and there we have it it's about 54 is the third quartile so now I need to find the first quartile which is a 25th percentile and notice that's exactly the same thing as what I had before except now I want a 0.25 instead of 0.75 so I can actually go second, check this out, entry. And it will give me exactly what I typed in before. And then I can just move over using my left arrow button and change that 7 to a 2. Now I hit enter, and I get my first quartile, which is about about 30, we'll say. I'm going to round to the nearest integer here. So then finally, if I want the interquartile range, I take the third quartile, 54, minus the first quartile, 30. And I can put that in a calculator if I want. I could also do it in my head. 54 minus 30. Hit Enter. And that's 24. So I can say that the 
interquartile range is 24. So that's all I have to say about the normal distribution for now. I hope this makes sense to you. If not, please come for help. If you're on campus, please come talk to me or um, drop me an email. If you're from another class or something, send your instructor an email and get some help and figure this stuff out. So have a wonderful day or night. And this is the end of the video. Thank you for listening.